In the name of Jesus, amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus tells a parable about not skipping church, which is at least a little bit awkward to preach to the people who didn't. I've done this once or twice, I guess, and it usually leaves you with somebody else in mind, somebody not yourself. And the problem with Christianity with somebody else in mind is that it's sort of like that dumb joke about the two guys go camp and get attacked by a bear. Two guys go camp and get attacked by a bear. First guy starts running. Second guy yells, you can't run faster than a bear. First guy says, I don't got to run faster than the bear. I just got to run faster than you. It's real cute. Problem is, do Christianity like that with somebody else in mind? It's not just sort of, you know, hoping that your neighbor gets ate by a bear. It's to see God as the bear. You don't have to be so holy as to outrun God. You just got to be better than someone else. Not here. This text makes it real easy. We know the excuses. So, y'all just smile to yourselves a little bit and know that maybe you're not holy enough to escape God's wrath, but you know, you're doing better than somebody, so you got that going for you, right? It turns your religion into something that is only used to raise yourself up, that you would look down on your neighbor. That's the problem with the bear God. I have to outrun you. So not only do you have to be worse so that I can look better, also, it leaves you knowing that you have to come to a church to be near a God that you want to run from at least a little bit. That's not going to lead to the peace that surpasses all understanding. And in all our looking for the folks who skip church, you missed the point. It is not about who is missing. It is about what is here and about who it is for. A man once gave a banquet. That means there's food here. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her beasts. She has mixed her wine, set her table, and sent out her young women to call from the highest places in town. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. To him who lacks sense, she says, come, eat of my bread, drink of the wine that I have mixed, leave your simple ways, and live. Walk in the way of insight. You see, God is here to feed you. Not the ones who outran someone else, the simple the lowly, the lame, the ones who can't run, the sinners, us. It changes a little bit how you might see God. Like, just think hypothetically, what if God wasn't the bear in this story? What if he actually loved us just a little bit? What if that banquet was not a test to see who actually loved him back, but an act of love and mercy rooted in his desire to actually feed people, feed sinners, feed you, all of them, even the poor and the blind and the crippled, even the sinners, even me. Some people will skip. I get it. But the important part isn't that some people find excuses to miss church. You know, you don't actually need a Bible to figure that out. Most people do just fine figuring out people skip church all on their own. What we need is a parable, not to teach us the stuff that everybody already knows and everybody already sees, but to remind us of the stuff that we would otherwise miss, like the people who end up dining with God are the ones who cannot outrun anybody else. They are the poor, the crippled, the blind, the lame. Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of heaven. But heaven is not filled with those who ran the fastest or over the backs of everyone who fell along the way. It's just for those who needed food. The point is that there's plenty here for you. The only reason, in the end, that people won't eat is because they didn't want to. The whole point of this parable that Jesus is trying to make is not how some people earned it and others did not, but that every single person here got drug in 
When one of those who reclined at the table with Jesus heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. But he said to him, A man once gave a banquet and invited many. It is not a meal you earn your ticket to heaven with. It's a meal that is given today. Jesus has a problem with the tents. It is not, blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of heaven. He tells the parable to address this one future tense word. Because it's not someday. It's now. God is here now. If you do not get that, don't poke fun at the people who aren't here to eat. If you don't think God actually shows up to this house on Sunday, why are you so insistent that other people do? It begins to corrupt our prayers. We pray thy kingdom come, as if it actually becomes our job to bring it about, as if there could be a better place if only people would get their act together. But thy kingdom come is not something that we accomplish. It's something that God does. Your catechism teaches you this. How does God's kingdom come? God's kingdom comes when our heavenly Father gives us his Holy Spirit so that by his grace we believe his holy word and lead godly lives here in time and there in eternity. That by his grace we believe his holy word and there his kingdom appears. That by his grace we lead godly lives here in time and there in eternity, because the two are connected. Christians do godly things, like receive from God. That's the godliest thing you can do. You receive his good gifts that he wants to give you. He gives you his word. He gives you his wisdom. Come down from on high to call us out of foolishness and into insight. That we would simply start here. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. And the fear of God's wrath is not accomplished by outrunning somebody else. It is met with the promise to answer that wrath himself. For our Lord Jesus Christ bore the cross for sinners. This was never a religion about escaping God. It is a religion about God joining us. Christ our Lord came down from heaven to dwell in the same pit as us, to bear our sins upon that cross and there to decry your sins are forgiven you, all of them. Every last reason that you would look upon your neighbor with some kind of smugness or another, your sins are forgiven you. Every last reason that you would be the one that they looked at, your sins are forgiven you. For your pride and your guilt, for your ego and your shame, Jesus died for you. Your sins are forgiven you. In this house, he makes you a part of it. He gives you a participation in his passion. He feeds you with his body and his blood. They are for you, and they are not for some day, but they are for now. He delivers a victory meal for you so that Christianity would not be measured in outrunning somebody else, in being the ones with the least amount of doubt or pain or sin or fear, but that Christianity would be measured in this. Did Jesus die for you? Is Christ risen from the dead? Eat and drink this. That's what gets you in. Is it a sin to skip church? Yeah. Third commandment, you know it. But that's because God is actually here for you to give you the bread from heaven to answer the sins of your past and the pains of today that flow from them. Church is set up for sinners, not as a checklist, but as a house of mercy. And it's really, really frustrating. It's, it's probably good to just maybe admit that. That when you pack a whole bunch of sinners into a box, even when you call it a church, they still sin. You would expect this place to be filled with better people. You would expect this place to be a place that helps us get better too. And then you show up. <laughs> You see who's really here. And if you only want to measure it by the people, I'd skip too. There's waffles other places. But there's Jesus here. He dines only with sinners, with you and with me. And in this meal, he gives to you forgiveness, not earned by your attendance, but given freely here by means, 
one upon the cross, delivered under bread and wine that are his body and blood. At this table, he gives peace to you, for to eat here is to eat in heaven even now. Whatever guilt and shame, whatever past you drag behind you everywhere you go, you can leave it at this rail, for here your sins are forgiven you. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. In the name of Jesus, 